Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So today we got a, a video that's kind of a fun airsoft replacement video, sort of, where we, I've always been a huge fan of the WE systems, right? Never for the gas blowback airsoft models. But one of the things I've kind of been critical of them is that they kind of tend to reuse the same parts where um, maybe it's not a big deal, but it, does, it detracts from the realism of the model that they make. So one part in particular we're gonna talk about today is the rear, uh, the rear sight, right? So right here you see a picture of two different apertures. The one on the left is uh, by Tokyo Marui and the one on the right, of course, is by WE. Well, not quite, we'll get to that in a little bit. But originally the one on the right, which is the WE, will come with an aperture that looks very much like the one you see on the left there with the little zero two. Um, that is more of the more later models that they've made and that's that'll be more accurate. But for the model that the XM177 or the A1 series, they really were supposed to have the A1 style sights, meaning the apertures were exactly the same size or anything like that. And the only thing that was different between them were the elevations when you flip between the two of them. Um, of course, WE being a little bit lazy, they kind of use the same parts in this area right here. So a lot of uh, air softers will wanna know, well, can I replace this and fix this problem, right? Um, or maybe your sights broke. Um, I, I don't know, uh, that's possible. I'm not sure what kind of cheap material they use, or maybe it's, um, you know, it's not really a high stress area, but sometimes maybe it can break, you know? So maybe you wanna replace it with a more real steel product. So today we're gonna see if we could do it. Um, well, actually, since you can see in this picture, it's obviously possible, um, but maybe uh, uh, maybe you're here to see how you can fix this problem, right? So um, today we're going to go talk about how we can fix this and how we can change the rear sights to uh, make it look better. All right, so to start, before we even get into here, we're going to show some quick slides of how to uninstall it. So of course, you need a flathead uh, first to unscrew the screwdriver here, uh, the screw in the back right here, right? Uh, once you get that screw removed, right, you're going to be able to uh, pull it out all the way out. And once it's all the way out, um, you're going to be able to pull uh, the rear aperture straight out just like so. Um, and then of course that reveals the leaf spring at the bottom and you can pull that out. I think that's called the leaf spring. That's what I've heard it called. I'm not really sure, uh, but I think that's what it is. That's the little this part that here, flat piece. You'll take it out. And then the last part uh, is going to be the little um, ball bearing and the spring on the side. So make sure you don't lose that when you pull that out as well. And now you should be all set to prepare to um, change it. So here are the two rear aperture sites. One is this is the original WE one. Um, it comes, even though I have the XM177, which is supposed to come with the uh, A1 style, where it's supposed to have the same aperture sizes. This is actually an M4 and onward system, or an M16A2 site, basically. The zero to two being indicative of the uh, yardage for this, the aperture that's used for. So zero to 200 yards, you're supposed to use this one. Um, whether it's longer distance ones, you want to use this one here. This is a real steel version right here. As you can tell, the long range is marked with the L, longer aperture, short range right here. Now notice how the aperture sizes are different. We've said this before on our video about the, um, uh, how to iron or set your iron sights for your airsoft guns. But this one, they're supposed to be the same. And the only difference is not, um, is that they adjust for elevation essentially. So when you're on the long range, it's a little bit higher. And when you flip it down to the short range, theoretically, um, I, I don't know how it's set on the airsoft version, but we'll see, but uh, it's supposed to be shoot a little bit lower. And there's an entire video that talks a little bit about that um, in, our, uh, in our video that we've made before. Check that out. Um, but today we want to know is that if you're not satisfied with the uh, the authenticity of this one because they're kind of lazy, this is not the right part. Can we buy a real one and use it instead uh, to make it more realistic to get the true A1 rear aperture sight here? And let's so let's find out. Okay, so I have with me here an original WE XM177. Um, I was actually making the video on the paint job here. Um, in which I had to remove all the parts to do a better paint job um, rather than before where I was kind of lazy to kind of try to take stuff up and then the paint job just, just, just looked really bad. So I thought, you know, since I'm going to remove the A1 rear sight anyway, I might as well show a video of how to uh, install it and see 
if the real steel version, um, which is this one right here, which is supposed to be accurate to this model, is going to work. And then second of all, what we're going to do is once it's installed, we'll still carry the same property as we've seen before, where the uh, long range aperture uh, is for longer distances. And then for short range aperture, uh, short ranges, right, it arcs, so it lowers the elevation uh, by a couple clicks right here. And that's the main distinction there. Check out that video I talked about that and you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so let's see if it works first of all. Uh, so let's try to assemble it. Everything is the original piece there. I only bought the, the aperture piece right here. I'm gonna use the original leaf spring that came with the WE model, the original bolts and everything like that. So let's see if it will work. So um, leaf spring right here, uh, we'll turn it around. So as you can tell, this is what it looks like, empty. Uh, we're gonna put that back in. Drop that in right there, face down like so. And then we're going to, it doesn't really matter which direction you start off with, actually it does. Um, but I mean, you can do it either in the down position or the short range aperture or the long range aperture, it doesn't really matter. Um, but why don't we just start it off by, um, I guess we'll start off in the long range aperture with the L right there. And then you can kind of just put it there, hold it in about the center. You don't really have to, but it may probably makes it easier. And then you're gonna insert the little, uh, oops, little uh, screw right there. And let's see if we can try to uh, screw that in. Hopefully that works, uh-oh. Hmm. Come on. There we go. I'm feeling the resistance now, so it's pretty good. It looks like it's working. Um. I'm gonna need a little uh, screwdriver though, actually, at this point. So let me uh, take out a flat head because I did as much as I can um, with my fingers, but now I'm going to need to uh, drive that in. So let's see if we can show that. And don't worry, we'll, re we'll have to recalibrate the sights and everything like that anyway once we're done. So, uh, but this is just to drive it in like so but pretty cool how huh? it works or at least it fits so you'll have the act or the the realism oops uh, hold on oops try not to scuff up the paint job uh -oh. hold on this is a little disappointing, even though I was able to attach it to the top like this, no matter how hard I try it, I cannot screw it completely in, unfortunately. Notice how it, this is not sitting, uh, well not flush, but in, well almost flush basically. Um, and because it's not sitting flush, I can't really attach uh, the, uh, the windage adjuster wheel on there. I mean, I could, but it's not going to line up with the little hole where the pin is supposed to go in. So um, if I do this, well, actually maybe I'll just adjust it. I guess we can try to do that and see what would happen. Um, let me try that, but it's gonna be hard to adjust this. Right now I can't even flip the wheel uh, well, I could, but actually it's pretty tough. So let's see how that plays out actually. Oh, wow, actually I was able to pop it in eventually um, use the real steel. Uh, for some reason I, it, it, was, it was kept being in that flush position, but I kind of just pressed it in a little bit harder and it eventually popped in actually. So now you can see the little uh, ledge is available or the little pinhole right there is open for our insertion point. So I will just put this, uh, oh boy, I'm so glad that worked. Um, so now I put in the little spring where it originally came with and I will now uh, drop in the little, um, the ball bearing that will help serve as the little selector detent. Um, and then 
let me try to put this back on and uh, I need another punch for this. I should have put this in here. Let's see here. Let's see here. As you can see, um, the detent pin actually put it in, so I have to kind of punch it out right there. That's the detent pin. That will slot in right away with the uh, uh, the little pin that you see in that picture right here. Uh, so once you kind of push it out here, uh, you can just use some pliers to uh, uh, to pull it out, which or you can use your fingers, which I did right here. So let's drop it in and make sure it's aligned nicely. Uh, here we go. Got the camera angle. I think this will be at the position. Okay. Looks like it's in. I will now insert the pin through the rear. Oops. I don't think it really matters which direction you go. Um, and when I say direction, like the numbers, you know, it's just, that's just the way it's gonna play out. So now I kind of just have to take a uh, thing right here, a punch. And I know I've seen this on the channel, people kind of cringe when I use this, but hey, uh, just never bought that hammer. Okay, so what you could do to make this easier actually is you can kind of, uh, once you have that position, you can kind of rotate it. And actually, let's just do it from the sideways. Take some pliers. Probably just squeeze it in. Hmm, so that's what's supposed to go in. So let's see. Okay, so the original, the in position is actually when the detent is being depressed, actually. That's what we're missing. Okay, so we'll just try to hammer it in from the side gently. There's the, the threaded edge. I think it's nice in in there. So now we can just uh, rotate it to the proper position. Uh, a little stiff because it's a new paint job, but uh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So now you got yourself a true A1 rear sight. Let's see if it flips over. There we go. Awesome. This just looks amazing now with the Colt coloring, the Parkerized gray finish. 
now we just gotta test out the uh, adjustments to see how it works and everything like that. But I think uh, this is great news that it can uh, now have that realistic touch for those folks who are wondering. Now, in case it wasn't entirely obvious, um, you can tell that with the new installation of the new rear sight, right, the apertures are going to be small regardless of which size you use, right, uh, compared to the original WE where you have the small aperture and the larger aperture, um, both of which, um, I mean, I mean, mainly the large aperture, it's easier to see. So with this new original A1 sight, um, historically, I'm talking about the history of the real steel, um, people have always complained that it's a little bit harder to kind of um, see through that small aperture. So of course, um, that is going to be a problem that's going to be inherent to this change, of course. So it's kind of like a downgrade, <laughs> but you're sacrificing an ease of use for really for realism right now. Uh, so that's kind of something to expect. Um, of course, it's not, not, not a permanent switch. You can always change it back if you don't like this um, to your taste. Um, but that's one thing. Um, unfortunately, though, what gets kind of interesting here is the uh, the effects that it has now. If you remember in the original video we, we were talking about when we were comparing the uh, the, the, the O2 or the, the short range aperture compared to the long range peep, uh, the smaller peep sight aperture, there was a difference, right? Um, and you use that difference to kind of account for the elevation difference um, and it affects how you use your airsoft models um, mainly being that the um, you know it, it, at certain points you want to use a short range aperture to account for that uh, traject that arc and you want to make sure you drop the elevation a little bit and so when you flip to the short range aperture remember you're able to put the round on your target at a certain area because it counts for the elevation and then towards that longer range you flip towards that longer aperture uh, I know it's kind of confusing I kind of did a slightly better job explaining it in that long video um, so watch that video again but um uh, but there was basically, a, the, what I'm trying to say, there was a difference between the, the, the original WE's long range aperture and the short range aperture. After we switch it though to this new aperture um, for the original, or the real steel A1 style, it all changes and it doesn't matter whether you are using the the one marked with the L or the one not marked with the L, it doesn't make a difference. And it basically all has this similar trajectory, basically. So while you are gaining a look uh, in terms of realism, you are losing, in some sense, a functional like realism to it. So I I'm not sure how to make, out of, make that, um, you know, uh, so think of that and see how if it's worth to change these sites for you. Um, but I hope that was kind of so fun though to watch and you know find how uh, it's possible to just replace your sites with a better quality one basically or you know uh, a more accurate re uh, replica one. All right, folks. I hope that was good. Uh, see y'all next time.